Hello. Hello. <clears throat> Is my mic on? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Today, I have interviewed the amazing and insane drum speedrunner CZR to see how he started speedrunning drums. If he will continue with Mario 64 speedruns since he got his sub 20 minute run in 16 star and a bunch more. If you enjoy this content, I would consider subscribing to his channel to not miss out on any future uploads like this and comment who I maybe should interview next. I would say then let's start with the introductions. Okay, uh, my name is CZR. You'll see my name online as CZR Drums. Um, and I speedrun games with my drum set and currently I hold over 60 records in drum speedrunning alone. Uh, I actually have an engineering background, that's what I went to school for and that's what I do professionally. But I've always loved music and I've been playing drums for about 15 years. From marching, pep band, studio, you name it. Um, and in 2020 I started speed running and the summer of 2020 i started doing both drumming and speed running and since i've just grown it into what it is today which is you know its own art form almost it, there's a science behind it and i've gotten to speed run games like super mario 64 uh, breath of the wild ocarina of time and those runs have been featured in gdq hot fixes esa uh, speed run marathon and task giving speedrun marathons so uh yeah that's a little bit about myself and uh what i do awesome i did not expect you to have 60 world records yeah i mean if i was to count every time a record was broken the number today is 69 actually nice nice so not counting for example my 16 star record i've broken that i don't know like 20 times but it's one unique record right uh, so yeah it depends how you count it but right now it's up to 69 the classic 69 all right then i would say let's start with the first question um around what time did you start streaming uh this was may of 2020 and it it was a couple of months after i started speedrunning ocarina of time that's what i was speedrunning at the time um with a controller i had done it offline for a couple of months and then um you know i think just usual speedrunner fashion you want to record the times and uh getting some some of those times live was a really cool experience so i tried twitch and um yeah i started like may 2020 so it was right after everyone had spent some extra time indoors after the pandemic had started uh, so i definitely think that accelerated the process um would you say that because you started around 2020 you gained faster like traction than other people uh not necessarily and i've been asked before like was this a way to get more views and more clicks and and not not really i guess i i wanted to play drums on stream as kind of like almost a gag or almost like a you know something fun to do on stream with with viewers but i quickly realized like the more time i was spending on drum speed running i quickly realized like oh this is this is actually kind of fun and i'm actually quite good at this and yeah i definitely because i was able to spend more time on it uh, back then i was able to like sort of figure everything out but uh but yeah there was there was nothing i mean i i remember looking on google on how to set up instruments to to play games and there there was very little information very li little resources on how to even go about that uh, so, yeah, all that extra time that I had indoors, I was basically trying to figure out how to even set everything up. And then from there, how to set it up in such a way where I could actually do speed runs. Um, yeah, that, that took a while to figure out. What was your motivation of starting streaming? Uh, I think I was definitely 
feeling, I, I, I don't know how to describe it, but I guess more alone during the start of the pandemic. And I thought that um, streaming some of my speedrun attempts would be a cool way to connect with other gamers and other speedrunners. I mean, at that time, I had already started dabbling uh, in content creation because I had done drum covers and other drumming material before that. So I was familiar with recording, with setting up audio. Setting up OBS wasn't that much different from uh, some other things that I've been worked on. Or actually, I had been using OBS since I started speedrunning to record my runs. I just ended, you know, instead of re just recording, I started streaming as well. So it wasn't that big of a shift from what I was already doing. And I think at that time, a lot of creators starting streaming, a lot of viewers started going to live streaming because of the extra time that everyone was spending indoors. Um, so yeah, that's a convoluted way of saying like, I, I'm not entirely sure why I started streaming, but I'm glad I did. It, it's been a very unique experience. And I think it, it is definitely what led to me pushing myself creatively. I remember once, like, I saw you, I believe, in one of the videos from Glad Jonas, I believe. I'm not sure if it was Glad Jonas, but I remember I, I saw you in one of the speedrunning, like, clips people, and, and I really found that, like, inspirational to see you play with um, instruments instead of, like, usually with a controller. And um, so after seeing you play with drums and such, that was that, that was very inspirational to me. So I believe around later the next year, I started streaming as well speed drums and such because um, I saw you with drums speed running, and that also kind of got me back into speed running. But then I couldn't find you anymore, not even the video. And I believe around, was it this year? Was it last year? Like November, I believe, that I found your channel again. And uh, yeah. That's really cool. Uh, I, you're not the first person that's told me that they either started speedrunning because they watched my stuff or they went back into speedrunning. And that's just like the coolest thing, right? I mean, that if nothing else comes from my drum speedrunning, just inspiring people to try it out. I mean, that that's going to have like butterfly effect, right? So yeah, that's really cool to hear. And uh, yeah, I've been featured in Glad Jonas's videos. Um, and who else does the speedrun highlights? There's someone else that does it. Cobra J, there you go. And then I've also been featured by Easyscape and Moist Critical on their channels before too uh yeah actually moist critical is the one here, here's a really cool fact drum speed running fact <clears throat> uh when i completed the very first drum speed run of super mario 64 i had just hit affiliate on twitch and the first stream i ever had as an affiliate was when i beat mario for the first time i had tried already a couple of times but kept getting stuck in a level or something but in this one the very first drum speedrun ever of super mario 64 moist critical went into my stream and gifted me 50 subs and that was part of one of his videos uh that he later posted on donating to small streamers and that's how i was featured in one of his videos and that was like very early on that was uh, like what really put me on the spotlight that's when people started noticing what i was doing um and ever since then like every year i have gotten at least like one wave of articles written about the speedruns that i do so i remember after maybe a month after that speedrun the very first one i beat mario under 30 minutes and that that got like worldwide attention articles in the u.s articles in brazil portugal japan bunch of places and that's what really got me to that's that pushed me to really explore this further and uh i had just been doing it for a handful of months and in my head i'm like i i just started i have s visions for how far this can go and um yeah we're still here today <laughs> that's amazing even articles like i could only fucking like dream about me getting the article yeah it's cool but it doesn't make you rich <laughs> like 
<laughs> it is, you know, that on top of the fact that I, I've been recognized at a Walgreens, like, should be top peak fame, right? But it's like, it's actually really hard to um, financially support content creation, you know? Yeah. E even with all the articles written, I remember thinking, wow, I made $10 on YouTube after all of the articles, after the wave of all the people showing. <laughs> and it's like, that's the most <laughs> I've ever made on there. Um, but still, I mean, I, I, I don't know if a lot of people pay attention to it, but like, it's, I'm not doing this for the monetary gain. Like, in my full time job, I probably make what I make in three months in that job is more than what I've ever made doing drum speed running in the three years, you know? <clears throat> so for me, it's it's become more of a passion at this point, and more than a passion. It's just something I'm very intrigued by. And I love the fact that it's very exploratory. No one has done this before. No one has routed. No one has designed controls for drums. No one has practiced actually doing these runs. So all of that is like very rewarding, especially when like, People like you that tell me, you know, you got me back into speedrunning and it was inspirational. I mean, that's what it's about. That's the song. That's why I keep doing it. Yeah, I can, I can really understand you with that. Like getting that much like support also by doing this is very like awesome, which often keeps you going. And it's very amazing that you're still doing this. Yeah, I mean, it basically replaced a lot of my time that I used to spend drumming and learning songs. Like, I guess that's also why I'm still doing this and it's to the level where it is now. I'm not in a band. I don't write or create music. Drumming always stayed like in the background while I finished engineering, right? So my drumming time went from offline practice, offline improving techniques, offline practicing the same thing over and over and over and over until I got it, offline watching other drummers and see how they do things. It went from that to me practicing drum speedrun strats often, doing them over and over until I got them right and watching other speedrunners to see what they did and it's like identical to my drumming practice. I just slapped speedrunning on top of it and so I already had a practice routine going. I already knew how to like, okay, I wanted to play this song. I need to piece it together. What techniques do I need to play the song? What drummers can play the song? Let's watch them play it. Let's see what I can do, what I can't do. Let's watch my practice practices to see where I can improve. I mean, literally parallel to how I would learn drums is exactly how I practice speedrunning. So it wasn't really a hard transition to get into that, that rhythm of, okay, practice, try, practice, try, practice, try, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I feel like learning an instrument or like speed running with an instrument before doing the other thing would probably be easier. Well, would make the other thing easier. Absolutely. I mean, the skill cap to do this is pretty high and I mean, that's just because I've been playing drums for, I think at this point it'll be, this summer will be 16 years, right? So to, it, it'll be really hard for someone to pick up drumming and speed running at the same time if they don't have experience doing either. So if you're a drummer and you like speed running, then you probably have uh, the highest chance out of anyone else to get one of my records. <laughs> Do you still remember what uh, the first game you streamed was? Yeah, it was uh, Ocarina of Time. Uh, I was just starting to learn um, the... It used to be the any percent category, category of Ocarina of Time. Uh, and it switched to defeat Ganon after all the SRM stuff was found. But yeah, it was Ocarina of Time and I was just doing runs of any percent or what what is now defeat ganon i think i did that for a month and then i tried ocarina of time on the drums and when i was mapping everything out and trying the tricks like basically how it went is i mapped out the drums 
to emulate an N64 controller. Then I checked if all the speedrunning tricks could be done. And then if I could do that, then a whole run was theoretically possible. So there I went and I tried um, Navi Skip, which is how you get out of the Kakariko fo Forest. This is the forest. <laughs> anyway, um, I tried Navi Skip. Then I tried the V2 skip in the Deku tree, that worked. Double kill with uh, Goma, that worked. Wrong warp worked. And I was like, okay, this, if I can't defeat Ganon at the end, then like this was at least crazy to already prove that it could be possible. But actually the last fight with Ganon is one of the easiest parts of that speedrun. So once I was able to do all the pieces, I started doing attempts at the run. And that's when I noticed like, oh my God, this is actually not only fun, but I'm good at it and I can do it. I can do a full run. Like, so that's that's how it started. Wow. Just hearing you say every like skip and like even wrong warp is possible is crazy to even hear or even think about. Yeah, because if you're familiar with that trick, you know that it's like brain perfect and your position has to, is very accurate too. But I mean, t drumming is like that. Drumming is very precise and timing and all of that, right? So I'm telling you, the parallels are are infinite when it comes to, to the stuff. So yeah, th once I was able to do wrong warp, I was like, okay, there's something, there's something special with this because this is not just any trick. This is not just playing games casually with drums. Oh, this is cool, you know, like, you can actually pull off some crazy stuff. Um, and that's that's what was pushing me to like keep doing it and keep figuring out, keep asking the question like, okay, is this next trick possible? Is this game possible? Then I moved to Super Mario 64 and like the movement in the game is addicting. And yeah, and then after that, the rest is history. Uh, when was the first time you did a stream with um, your drums? Uh, June 2020. So I'm telling you, it's like a month after I started uh, streaming regularly on Twitch. So yeah, I think I basically only speedrun with a regular controller for about a month. And then ever since, I've just been doing drum stuff, whether that's drum speedrunning or drum gaming in some sense. And I haven't streamed all this year. I'm taking a, a long break from streaming. But on and off, I've been streaming pretty much since. That's crazy. So literally the entirety of your Twitch starts is mostly from drums. Yeah, yeah. Wow. What was your motivation of doing drum runs? Um, it was specifically, I had planned to play drums on stream, right? Um, and I, I think like exactly how it started. I'm trying to give as much detail, like the spark of the moment. I was reading this book about learning math, right? Like if you're bad at math, how to learn it. And it talked about like how you need to have times where you can kind of let the brain decompress and your brain can start making connections between different things. That's what, what, we'll leave that there. I started uh, streaming Ocarina of Time runs and the intro, if you know, if you know the intro of that game, it, it's like two and a half minutes, something like that. It's long, it's a long intro. And I had the drum set right to the side while I was doing runs. So in that first minute of the intro, I would just grab a drumstick and I would just be like randomly hitting stuff. For, you know, for the viewers to just like see that I have a drum set. Then I was like, oh, it'd be cool to do songs and then speed run and then songs. So then I did that. Then I was like, okay, is there any way that I could play games with my drum set? So that's when I started looking it up. I couldn't find anything. And then, you know, I came across a program that might make it possible. And then I was hooked because then I was like dead set on solving this problem. Can you play Ocarina of Time with drums? I thought that's cool. I love drumming. Ocarina of Time is like my favorite game of all time. If I can make this work, that'll be really cool. So then once I was able to control Link, 
that's when I started asking myself, wait a second, like, can, I wonder if you can pull off like cool tricks. Cause that'd be cool to pull off on stream for viewers. So that's how everything was fueled in the beginning. And it was just a, a exercise of um, as, asking the question and then answering that question. Like, is it possible to do a certain skip? Okay, what would I need to do to, that, to do that skip? Okay, hit the snare drum while hitting the bass drum and then you hit the floor tom and then the right timing hit the china cymbal and it should work. <laughs> that's how it went. <laughs> uh, and I, I had mentioned the book because I remember laying down and just thinking, wait a second, I can drumming and gaming, like I could potentially connect these two things. That's when I started Googling. That's when I started doing research. And that's when I started thinking like, okay, um, what kind of things are possible? And once I started answering those things and I kept going and going and going and going. And again, it just, I got this drum beat, no pun intended, of question, answer, question, answer, until the question was, can you speed run Ocarina of Time with a drum set? Yes. Can you speed run Super Mario 64 with a drum set? Yes. How fast can you do it? Ocarina of Time, under 30 minutes. Super Mario 64, under 20 minutes. Like, yeah, this, those are just the 200th question where we're at today but it's it was a whole process to get there pretty much i like how you mentioned the math like puzzle solving stuff thing as well like i would say that was a good example too yeah thanks and it yeah it was a problem solving exercise basically and that on top of speedrunning being very identical to learning an instrument and learning a song that's when like it really started making sense and I, I don't think i had like a like a specific moment where i was like oh this is it i'm gonna create drum speed running it was i remember just after beating ocarina of time under 30 minutes i was like i was thinking to myself okay yeah, we have something at that point i had just been doing it for a month and i was like what could this look like in three months in six months in a couple years and like that i had that vision early on um because like so early on i was seeing already the the potential um and e even since then not only have i learned runs have i um tried different games and everything but even the control design has gotten so sophisticated at this point that um like e even to this day of uh, i don't i haven't mentioned this but i do have a programmer that helps me connect the drums with real hardware. And he helped me write the script for the controls. So for example, I'll message him and be like, hey, Ona, if I whack a drum, I want that direction to be toggled. And if uh, I hit, if I roll on it, I want that direction to be held. But as, as soon as I stop rolling, uh, the joystick goes back to neutral. And if I hit really softly, hold the joystick in ESS position. And what this man does, <laughs> he comes from the task community. So obviously he's a genius. Um, and he writes the script um, at, to his best of his abil abilities, because he's not a musician and he's not a speedrunner either, but he knows a lot about consoles and, and um, cool assisted runs. And then he'll send me the file, I'll try it, I'll give him feedback and we'll go back and forth. We're on like the 15th iteration of that. And I just proposed new changes for the drum controls um, that are gonna be like a huge overhaul. And that was like a week ago. And I've been working with him since I think November of 2020. And he's the person that helped me move from emulator to real N64, which is what I still run today when I do N64 runs. How many games outside of N64 have you tried to play or speedrun with your drum so far? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I've done drum speedruns of Breath of the Wild and on an actual Switch, uh, Super Mario Bros on a real NES. Um, what else have I done speedrun-wise? 
I think those have been the main games I have speedrun. I do have a Pokemon Blue Softlock percent speedrun out there, and it actually it's a, it's a great time, even for it being on the drums. Like if it was on a regular uh, keyboard or whatever, it would still be a good time. Um, and that was for I did that for a competition that Easyscape was running at that time. I don't, I don't remember the details. Um, what else? Outlast. Outlast any percent? I have like a 12 minute time on that, on the drums. What else? It's all the games I can think of. I do have all my records in a Notion page linked in, like I have my link tree type of page where I have all my links. All the records are in one table and you can see the game, the platform, the date, and the video link of every single one of those records. Right, I completely forgot about Notion. I had literally had it open like, I believe 10 minutes. No, nah, not 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, literally like an hour ago, I had it opened. I haven't updated it. It shows 66 records, but it's, it's 69 now. <laughs> <laughs> I remember now what I wanted to say. <laughs> oh, sweet. Yeah. But yeah, it's crazy how he solved the uh, whole problem with drums and trying to speedrun, even with like getting a tasser like to help you with it. And you, I, you even have like a promo code I remember for the software that you use now. Yep, um, I can talk about that a little bit because there's actually different ways to set up instruments to play games. And the way the TAS programmer person helped me, so Ona, the way he helped me set this up is with the same device that TAS replayers use, um, we set that up with a script, a custom script. But the software that I promote and that I have a link for, uh, that's how you can play any PC game with instruments or any emulated games. So, I don't use that when I play on real hardware, but I do use it when I play uh, PC games. I guess on the Switch, the Switch has a very particular setup too. But yeah, I reached out to that company and they're, they're like a music software, right? And the guy had never heard of instrument gaming or anything. And it's been a very successful partnership since because anyone who's looking to play with an instrument can use that software to set up anything on the PC. Emulated, a PC game, and I also have tutorials on it on my page. Like I'm not hiding any of the info. Whatever instrument you have, you'll most likely be able to set it up with just the tutorials. And they even have a free trial version. So like if you just want to try it, you don't want to spend any money, uh, you don't even have to, but it is a very powerful piece of software. And back in 2020, I learned to repurpose it for this very purpose of like changing the MIDI signals into keystrokes. That's like where the magic is. Because then you can play any game that can accept a, a keyboard, which is most games on PC. But yeah, I, I have a partnership with them. Hopefully more partnerships coming this year. I don't know if I can talk about anything yet. But yeah, there's like more than one ways I have things connected. I'm recording some Switch stuff later. So I had to disconnect my N64 and plug up all the Switch stuff. It's like several different things I have to change from audio to video to how it accepts the inputs from the drums. Yeah, <laughs> it's a nightmare actually. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine that entire like mess of cables probably too. I have a picture on Twitter like of my setup. It's beautiful, right? I can play drums. I have my screen here. I can do desk stuff. I have all my consoles right here. I can see them. I can turn them on, reset them, everything. But the amount of cables I have, gross, disgusting. But it's, it's the price that I pay for having this type of setup. So I'm okay with it. I mean, I'm not okay with it, but I'm okay with having a neat setup and yeah, <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> yeah, the entire cable mess is, I would be completely like out of my mind seeing like that many cables. <laughs> I purposefully like have stuff between me, like my eyes and the cables. So I rarely see it unless I like go back there 
Uh, and then it's like, all right, let's see what cables, what. Oh, uh, here's here's an, uh, another cool thing that I, 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 I need to make a video about my setup because it's so complicated <laughs> at this point. But like, I have a switcher, a control switcher. So if I wanted to play on the N64, I can just switch it and it's connected to a 12 foot long extension so i can basically like sit back there and relax and just practice anywhere in, in my office basically and then whenever i need to i can just switch back to the drums and it's it's beautiful <laughs> crazy but yeah that's why i also have all of my cables like behind my <laughs> screen so that i don't see the entire mess that i have yeah sometimes you gotta do it it's all right what other games will you speedrun now that you have beaten Mario 64 in under, uh, was it 20 minutes? Yes, um, there's definitely a lot of games I want to try, even if it's not full speedruns. So for example, I've, I've tried Elden Ring, I've tried Celeste, I've tried Dead Cells, I've tried Minecraft, I've tried GTA 5, Super Smash Bros, and probably more games than that. But games that I want to try in the future, like this year, I definitely would love to beat Elden Ring with the drum set, like the full game. It's so hard. That's a hard game already. Uh, but doing it with the drum set would be really cool. Um, Celeste be beating the game and potentially doing a full speed run that would be amazing too. Uh, Dead Cells, I don't know if you're familiar with that game, very fun, difficult game. I would love to complete that game fully. I don't know if I'm gonna do uh speed runs of that. Um, I'm definitely gonna revisit some Super Mario 64 categories that I've done before. I don't know if zero slash one star is possible on drums. I've been able to do the LBLJ on the drum set, like seriously, full on. But I I still have not been able to do the SBLJ, which is like infinitely harder. I can bear it. I think I've done it once with a controller and I have like more than a hundred of attempts under my belt. And I've tried it on drums, but it's not any easier, of course. Um, I want to revisit um, Breath of the Wild, and even if it's not for beating my PB times, just to get familiar with the controls again for Tears of the Kingdom, which is coming out in a couple months. So I'm definitely going to be doing some Tears of the Kingdom drum gameplay, and we'll see how the speedruns are, because the Breath of the Wild drum speedrun is insane. All the R&D that went into making that happen was insane. So. I mean, but it's cool. It's really, I think it pays off once like I'm able to complete a full run on the drums. Anything else? The Mario movie? No, <laughs> on drums. <laughs> <laughs> it's like control the mouse, move to watch four times the speed, wait till the movie finishes, and that's a speedrun world record, you know? That's, that's the best speedrun you can do. <laughs> Hey, you're giving me some like April Fool's ideas or something. <laughs> um, there's also, uh, do you know when this is coming out? You said a couple months maybe? I think if I'm not wrong, it's the 6th of April. Okay, so I might, uh, I might be able to talk about this. I'll let you know. And like if, if I don't want you to feature it, that's fine. <laughs> but um, something I've been... Uh, talking about with my patrons is doing a so i know that was like a lot of different words and stuff <laughs> but that's what i'm gonna be working on in the next couple of weeks uh so i learned the super mario bros 3 speed run already i've tried a couple of the skips on drums it looks like everything will be possible so now it's just about recording all the sections putting them all together and you know yeah i can i can already think of how much more efficient this process would be instead of having like an insane time in that category so basically what i'm saying is it's gonna how, how can i wear this i think i'm gonna have like main games that i'm speed drumming games that i'm trying to develop the perfect drum speed run or a very very high level drum speed run 
So those will be the spliced ones. And then just like general drum gameplay, just to see like if certain games are possible or just like, you know, to have fun. So that's kind of how I'm looking at it. And um, that might be the evolution of the content I make just because like streaming takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. And uh, offline creation is much more manageable and accommodating and, um, and yeah, so we'll see. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is I do want to keep submitting to marathon events. So if I can keep doing, that's like another thing that really motivates me. If I can do this, which is like my two favorite passions, drumming and gaming, and it benefits charity, that's like a huge plus. So I'm gonna keep learning runs. Uh, I'm gonna keep exploring different games and different strats, and hopefully it will at the very least help um, raise money for charity. And at best makes me rich. <laughs> no, <laughs> at, at best, it's like, um, I don't know. There's honestly nothing I can say right now that would be a realistic representation of how far this can go. That's where I'll put it. I don't know how it can look like in the future. Um, but, you know, when, I, when I'm making my content, I don't just have people who can watch now in mind. I'm also thinking 30 years from now, how can my content have an impact? That's why like, I'm very passionate about what I'm doing now uh, because I understand the, the nicheness, the uniqueness of the content. I think that it, it, will, it will provide like longevity to the stuff that I'm making um, because it's so unique and no one else is doing it. So yeah, just all that to say that like all the things that are going on in my head that I would like to try. I, I get so many ideas, I write them down. I don't always get to all of them. Some of them are horrible, some of them are really bad. Uh, but that's just kind of how it goes. I mean, that's that's how it is. A lot of experimenting, a lot of, um, you know, finding yourself in the art. <laughs> that's going to be very interesting to see you. Talking about the topic of Mario 64, um, do you think you will be able to get any lower with your time? I think so. Uh, simply just reacted to my uh, 16 star record run and so i got the chance to watch the run again and i haven't seen it in its entirety since right after i had posted it and um, it was also a good time to just kind of look at the mistakes of the run right it's not perfect there's a handful of mistakes in the run nothing major really but the you know certain movement mistakes um i can't i don't i didn't have any, like any deaths i can think of like the red coin star in lol trash um i don't think i had anything else that was super bad but in in uh, bowser in the sky i did right before like the long jump you do right before the goombas and the last pipe i fell down and lost like 15 seconds to a part of the run that's like usually not even a problem but it's because there's there's certain invisible hitboxes in the rotating platforms in that level and i hit one of them right unlucky and so if i was just to do everything the same i can already get really close to a 1930. i missed the third throw in the last bowser which is about like 12 15 seconds there so just those two things, and I'm already really close to a, a low 19 minute time. So yes, I think I can definitely go lower. The sum of best is close to 1830. So theoretically it's possible. The thing is like, um, because playing on drums, it's so difficult. It is much harder to optimize runs. It is much harder to be consistent um, and it's so easy to make a mistake. One of the comments I saw in Simply's video was like, look at how scuffed the movement is in that LLL red coin star, which is the one I said was trash. Like I didn't do the optimal strat. I burned my butt a couple of times, lost so much time there. But that's the reality like if the strat for whatever reason goes a little bit off of what i'm used to doing then i lose so much time because it's so hard to move mario with the drums 
especially in a way that wasn't pre-planned or uh, is reactionary. So I do think a sub-19 is possible. It's going to take an insane run, uh, potentially change in some strats. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm in no rush to do that. I think my record is safe for now. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever like broken something in like a speedrun because like you had because you reset and got so mad no but i have broken my hand before so late 2021 i had an accident at home and uh it was in my on my right hand like right here and we went to the hospital and it turned out to be a hairline fracture. And so I had to have surgery, I had to have a cast, I had two like long nails just impelled. I was a kebab, I had a hand kebab for a couple months. Um, so it wasn't related to speed drumming, but I was very worried that I wasn't gonna be able to do it afterwards. Um, so I took my recovery very seriously because I, I was at the point already where I knew that like I wanted to keep doing this and I didn't want to lose the ability to do that. And so I had to take a six month break from doing any type of drumming and uh, I just took recovery very seriously and slowly worked my way to back, back to speed drumming. but. It wasn't that easy. At first, I, I had a lot of, um, what's the name? Like, my my muscles were in the same in my right hand. They were very stiff. Atrophy, that's the name. They were atrophied, so they were much smaller. They weren't as strong. So I had to, I had to like, do the whole process of recovery and getting back to 100%, which I luckily did. Although I still get hand pain uh, every now and then, uh, my hand is fully functional. But it also forced me to take warming up and stretching very seriously. I mean, I do it even on days that I'm not gonna drum, I'm stretching my forearms and my fingers. And it, it almost has become habit. Like I haven't done it in this interview because I'm trying not to just like use my arms a lot. But if I'm just talking to someone, like I'll just like, start stretching my fingers and my wrists and doing this and doing motions. I mean, I take the range of motion, the endurance, the health of my forearms and hands very seriously after that injury. Now, how mad I've gotten with speed running, I can tell you, I remember the most mad I've ever been during a speed run was when I first tried the 120 star speed drum of uh, Super Mario 64 and the 100 coin star in Rainbow Road. That's all I have to say. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, you should know already. It's a pain. But okay, I'll say more. It is. It, it took me, I think, one hour out of the five and a half hours that that speed run took to get all 120 stars. One of those hours was spent just on 100 coin star in Rainbow Road. It was a nightmare. I almost quit and I was like, yeah, I was definitely throwing a tantrum on stream. But hey, I I ended up doing it. I finished the run and it wasn't satisfying. My bo body was dead at, 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 like after that run. But a couple of days after I had after I had fully and mentally recovered and physically and emotionally recovered, it was rewarding as hell to do it. It was a cool run to to complete. Yeah, the Rainbow Road 100 star is just painful. It is Rainbow, so painful. Is it? No, it's Rainbow Ride. Rainbow Road is Mario Kart. All right. <laughs> I get that confused all the time, and I've gotten roasted by chat so many times, and now I like I have to correct myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Though. I completely forgot about it too. Why would they name it so close? Huh? Huh, Nintendo? Yeah. <laughs> Four hours. Like, I would have not even managed to do like two hours. Yeah, I think uh, that's actually another question that comes up often is how long I can do this for. And when I first started doing drum speedruns, I could only do two to three hours max. But I would be super tired afterwards. But now I'm to the point where I can do four to five hours and still be okay. Like, yeah, I'll be tired, 
but I could go a couple of more hours. If anything, like I'm just exhausted of doing it like mentally. So I just need to take a break. But it got to the point where I was not getting tired after a couple hours. Uh, but that just comes from doing it over and over and over. And the main drum rudiment that I'm playing is the double stroke roll. Uh, right, right, left, left. So it's just doing like 80% of what I'm doing is just that. So I'm just there like. So can you do this for three hours? Um, so yeah, it was just, the endurance took a while, but it definitely grew, uh, got better with time. Like the only buff thing in my body is my forearms because of it. <laughs> If there ever were more people doing Mario 64 speedruns with other instruments or even uh, drums uh, themselves, would you do a collab with them and maybe do like a race or something similar? I, I almost answered that not seriously. I was going to say like, no, I'm going to try to block them, suppress them as much as possible because <laughs> I want no competition. But like... Um, like I say that almost sarcastically because um, I feel pretty much the opposite. I've put tutorials ever since I knew like how to do this because I want people to try it. I want other drummers to try Super Mario 64 speed running. And um, I've, I've had like two people reach out to me about it. They set their drums up on an emulator. It's like the easiest way to start it, to start up. And uh, they quickly gave up right away. And I was like, okay, I guess I won't see like how someone else would do this. So absolutely. I mean, if someone tries drum speed running, especially Super Mario 64, I would love to collaborate with them. A race, I don't know. It might be very one-sided because I've just been doing it for a really long time. <laughs> but yeah, I would, love, I would love to see it. And part of it, is also to sort of gauge where I sit, right? Because I have no one else to compare myself to. And that's that's like a privilege to say, of course. But at the same time, um, I can very easily fall into like being, um, how, would I, how would I say this? Complacent and being like, oh, I'm good. Like my runs are good. And I don't know. I have like this arbitrary um goal or ar arbitrary pressure to keep doing this right although i have no competition but because i'm just acting like there is i'm acting like there's someone else out there who is also uh trying to do this and trying to beat records and stuff but very much like how the speed running community operates which is open information uh any new strats are shared um, any tips on the run, any help that anyone needs. Like I've always had a positive experience in the speedrun community when it came to that. And so I've been very intentional to do the same with drum speedrunning. If you're interested in it, uh, I am here to help and I support you. But I also understand that it's difficult and it's not for everyone. So, um, you know, totally up to you, but yeah, no gatekeeping here, no gatekeeping info. There's no corporation behind this. It's literally just me. <laughs> I'm not trying to sell, <laughs> right? Maybe I should patent it. I mean, I think if I truly wanted to be rich, I could just patent all of this, the script, the control design, all that. But I'm truly not interested in the monetary gain. Like I'd rather have everyone have the info on how to do this and i want to see how other people do it and if they do it better than me then great i mean that's that's what it's all about right um i guess that brings up a good point like i do think that there will be someone who breaks my records in the future i do think that will happen i don't know they're gonna be like my best times but definitely my worst times <laughs> are very beatable for someone who like who can spend the time and has like the right equipment and expertise to start. Uh, but yeah, I hope to see more drum speedrunners. But I have seen an uptick of instrument gamers. I've seen uh, I've collaborated with musicians who play Elden Ring with 
saxophone, piano, harp. Uh, I've seen people play games, uh, what else, with their voice. I've seen Guitar Hero guitars, uh, which is not like necessarily an instrument, but it's, it's a controller. Like all of this is just like instrument controllers. Uh, so I have definitely seen more people try that. And uh, that is already like really cool to see other musicians kind of get the hang of what's happening. Like you're good at an instrument, you'll probably be good at uh, using it as a controller. So yeah, I hope the number grows. I, I hope that we'll see more musician gamers in eSports featured by Twitch, at marathon events. I mean, I think it's, it's still early and still small right now, but I'm sure we'll, we'll see more of it in the future. When was the first time you started to learn drumming? Yeah, um, I was, I think I was going to drum lessons at a church. When I like, was it after sixth grade? I had just started band in sixth grade and I chose percussion. And so I was already sort of familiar with percussion and holding the drumsticks and, you know, playing very simple rhythms. And uh, I took a drum lesson and you know basically learned just how to incorporate my foot too because the hands are identical to any other percussion that you might play and the rest is history then i started learning how to play songs from like lincoln park three days grace papa roach lower definition very underrated band there and i started learning how to play the drums to these songs and that's what got me ultimately hooked. When I started being able to play these songs, I mean, it was very rewarding. Uh, that on top of doing band in school. So I, I did learn how to read music. I learned properly how to like hold sticks, play different percussion instruments from marimba to uh, the snare, to xylophone, to the quint. I marched the quint in high school. There's actually, uh, when I spin Bowser, I'm using a technique that I used to use in marching band, which is called uh, uh, the swipe. It might be named differently. If you're a drummer, you might know it as a different thing, but it's like when you hit two things with uh, one hand, da -da, da -da, it's like a swipe. And that's a marching, that's very prominent in Quint playing in marching band. So yeah, I had like a lot of different experiences with drumming, which I think helped me be able to be like versatile for drum speed running. But yeah, I've been playing for a long time and you know, I was just always doing something, whether it was studio, marching, pep band, drum lessons, and now drum speed running. Were you in a band once? Yeah, I've, um, I did like traditional band in school and uh, marching band and stuff. But outside of that, in high school, I was in a heavy metal band. What was the name? I think it was called Third Degree. <laughs> but I'm mistaken. Uh, but yeah, it was a it was a metal band, and uh, we we did like a couple things locally, but it never really went anywhere for uh, for me because I like decided to focus on school. Um, I just didn't have the time to do school band i was doing early college all ap classes um and outside of that like doing a band oh, i was working too at best buy um so yeah i haven't been in band since and what i have done is reach i started to reach out to more creators on like twitter or tiktok to see if they want to collaborate because i think that's much more doable than um joining a band and gigging like I, I just don't have the space to do stuff like that so yeah we'll see we'll see i have a collaboration that's like we're actively working on right now i do plan on releasing the drum audio only of my drum speed runs on soundcloud and spotify and i don't know potentially vinyl releases if there's like enough demand for it um so yeah i wouldn't I wouldn't rule out that like I might do music in the future. I've always loved, loved music, but 
Yeah, only one one band, and it was a heavy metal band. I love it. I love heavy metal. I love metalcore. It's like my favorite genre of music to to jam out to. What would you say is bringing you down the hardest right now? I would say I, I would have to give a little bit of context, but I work full time. I'm also a dad, um, and I also live in Ohio. All, all of those things are like extremely difficult right now, because like my own government's trying to. I, I want to use that word. My own government doesn't care about me, right? First of all, I feel like this would go in into very complex topics, but um, I'm worried about how much time we have. Seriously, like I'm not, I don't want to say I'm not into politics, but as a minority living in the US, I have to be aware of politics and the politics aren't looking too good. Parents are being neglected by the government. Kids are being neglected by the government. Our label, our labor is being exploited in the U.S. And I'm saying that as someone who is privileged enough to have been able to go to college, uh, study engineering, and get a full-time job. And I'm still feeling it. I'm still feeling the the squeeze, the pressure of like working five days a week, the lack of time I have to rest, to work on creative hobbies. I mean, I'd like to think that me drum speed running is actively like giving the middle finger to capitalism because I'm not making enough money to be sustainable at this art, but, but I truly believe in it, you know? And so that's what I'm gonna do. This is me. This is like the way I like to express myself. But of course, any time that you stray away from the usual, it's really hard. You can get punished for not doing, not working a full-time job. I mean, it, it literally can be a death sentence in the US. So all of that to say that it, there's definitely a stronghold that the economy has on people I mean, just look at statistics, 60% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, where like the top, the three richest people have the same wealth as the bottom 50% in the US. And, you know, I could go on and on, on and on about it. And it's very frustrating as someone who has seen these same problems when I was a kid, school being bad, jobs not paying enough, parents working too much, no mental health resources, you know, budgets that absolutely make no sense, policies that make no sense, laws that make no sense, politicians that don't care about people, that have no expertise, that don't care about science. I mean, I've literally seen the same problems when I was a kid, and we seem to like just make it worse as time goes by. So if you're young, yes, it's bad, it's horrible, and it's probably gonna get worse before it gets better. But um, the hope that I have is young young people, like when I see young people, how creative they are, how open-minded they are, how they genuinely care about other people. I mean, there is hope, but it's gonna take, it's gonna take y'all. <laughs> Cause the previous generations um, did not set up things right. <clears throat> So I wonder if, if anyone listening to this could relate to it, but it's really hard to be a, a creative when literally it's one of the hardest ways to be rewarded in society. I mean, in, in this society, you get rewarded for being, you know, extroverted and good at exploiting people. So, you know, I don't really have that best of advice because it's something that I'm still struggling with too. How to, how to operate in this system. Because of course, if I could just say, all right, no capitalism, then great, but I can't do that. I have to right now participate in it. So, you know, what is the best way to do that? How can I help the most people? How can I reduce harm? Um, 
that's my goal and my mission for the next couple of years. And if I can do that through creative means, then chef kiss. Um, that was a heavy question but, and a heavy answer, uh, but I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that way. There's just like plenty of reasons not to be um, optimistic, optimistic right now, but uh, even so, there's still plenty of reasons to be hopeful. Have you had a burnout before? Yeah, um, I'm not, I don't talk a lot about it, but I'm neurodivergent. So one of the features of being neurodivergent is uh, you can get very easily burnt out. So a lot of my energy goes towards recovery, um, planning my schedules, making sure I have enough time to rest. And um, I've had to take breaks before. I mean, I'm taking a streaming break right now because I was pretty burnt out from streaming. Um, it took a lot of energy and although like I love doing it, it's a super cool way to connect with people. But I also have to realize that, you know, I am neurodivergent, so I won't have the same stamina as someone who doesn't have a full-time job and just does streaming, for example, or just does content creation, or is not neurodivergent or doesn't have any disabilities. Like, um, that's just like the reality. But yeah, I've experienced burnout pretty much my whole life. And uh, only until recently have I learned how to go about it and how to manage it better. And I still get burnt the hell out all the time, but now I, at least I'm aware of it and at least I'm aware of what's happening. So we'll see if it gets better. With your long break on Twitch, um, would you say it will, it, well, it is going to be harder for you trying to get back to scream, uh, streaming or do, would you say it will still be the same? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think streaming is going to become a secondary form of content for me personally, as in it's not going to be like the main, main form. Uh, that being said, it's if I wanted to stream the amount that I think I would need to to be successful doing streaming for example then I would stream much much more so I just have to keep that in mind that it almost doesn't matter when I come back uh, it almost doesn't matter like what I'm streaming or what I'm doing there will be a process when coming back I might not have the same numbers or be able to stream as much as I used to so you know I'm just gonna use it as another way to connect with viewers without having that pressure of like oh I need to stream X amount of times this month or oh I need to stream X amount of hours or um, yeah I told myself this year I would like fall less into those very predatory systems that are obviously designed by twitch right to get you to come back and keep streaming and don't stop streaming and make sure you keep streaming or you know your numbers are going to fall and your viewership is going to fall like yeah i mean i could play that game but i will burn out much easier much faster so as far as like people supporting me i mean i know people come and go on twitch um, it does take a long time and just people have lives, you know, school, work, uh, family, whatever. Um, so yeah, I, I do think it'll be a process. I don't know what would get me to go back, maybe like a big project or a big event. But yes, uh, streaming, streaming is not sustainable for people who have full-time jobs or, or kids or both. Uh, did you ever get hate because of something you did or said? Um, no, I've actually had, I have had a very positive experience throughout the whole drum speed running thing. Um, when you create content, you're obviously putting yourself out there and you're putting yourself out there expecting, you know, there to be some sort of negative response. Like it's it's hard to not see that you know but i want to say i've maybe had two or three comments that have been negative like towards the stuff i do 
and it's been stuff like, you know, you already posted a video very similar to this, and this was referring to my 16 star runs. And it's like, well, well, duh, <laughs> that's the process, right? <laughs> so no fault to them. I mean, it just wasn't content for them. I'm, I'm trying to try, I'm trying to remember what other negative comment I've had. I think the most negative comments I've seen have been from like Facebook and it wasn't even me posting stuff. It was a like a gaming news organization posting something about my drum speed runs. And there I did see more negative comments now that, that I'm thinking about it. And it was stuff like, oh, well, he has the time to do that, so of course, or why would anyone do this? Or, you know, just questions like that. But again, it it's hard to see it as negative because it's just people that don't get it, right? Like, I hate on golf, but it's because I don't understand golf. You know, <laughs> like I, no one should feel bad because I don't like golf or I hate, I hate golf. But, you know, like it's, it, it's been a very positive experience, actually. And even in Simply's reaction, you know, I, I was scrolling through the comments, and I'm like, if I see one negative comment, I'm going to cry. Uh, and I didn't. <laughs> so I didn't see a single negative comment. Um, and uh, so that's been, that's, that's been great. It's, it's hard for that to happen. It's hard for you to make content and to not see like negative comments like that but i think that just speaks to the uniqueness of what i do and my personality isn't to like okay maximize we gotta we gotta maximize we gotta get as much money and i need to grab as much of your attention and pay attention to me and you know like that gets rewarded a lot in social media which is why you see it everywhere but i've tried to you know just put myself out there my way. I guess it's the best way to describe it, really. Um, and I think that has paid off because people, they see my stuff and they're like, oh, okay, it checks off. Also, my stuff is very polished. Like I'm not always posting the behind the scenes, all the dirty stuff, all the practice and the uh, finding routes and the repetition. So you also have to keep that in mind. The stuff I'm posting, it's my world records or my polished strats and so there's all there's obviously an element there um that plays into why i get positive reception but but yeah it's okay if i do i i feel like in the future if i do get more negative reactions or negative feedback like i have enough support from viewers and people who have been following me for a long time to know that like my stuff is good. My stuff is valued by the right people. And it, I don't need it to be valued or appreciated by everyone. So very fortunate to be in the, at that point of my like creative journey where I do feel validated. So it almost doesn't matter if I get a ton of hate. <laughs> it doesn't. Oh, I do have to point out one other thing is that obviously because I'm male and I don't have a thick English accent and I'm light skinned. All of those privileges are also a reason why I haven't gotten a lot of hate. Like if I was darker skinned or if I was a woman or if I was part of the um, LGBT community, and I'm pretty sure that I would get much, much more hate. So I do want to recognize that I'm saying that from a pr place of privilege because not everyone has that privilege. I mean, I cannot imagine being a girl in do doing streaming because holy crap, the stories that I hear, I have never been sexually harassed in my DMs. Like, it is crazy. And like, it might happen, but like the chances of it happening, very low. The chances of my bodily autonomy being like attacked, Oh, because I'm a dude and it's, it's really fucked up that that's the way it is but I I want to like make sure to highlight that because if you've made content online and you've received little hate or little harassment then you you are in a place of privilege right um, 
So yeah, don't hate people. People are different. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> uh. Right, we're now at the last part, which is the surprise questions. Ooh, shoot. <laughs> right. Uh, this is from Yumi and Annie from the previous interview I have done, and they have asked you uh, this, if it would load. <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, I'll watch it. Give me a sec. What question? <laughs> what question do we have to ask for the next interviewee? Oh, that is a good question. I didn't know. Right, you guys have to <gasps> ask also. Ah, do you wash your eyes? Wash your eyes? <laughs> rice. Yeah. Rice? Oh, you you want, I, I was gonna rice, I was gonna ask a rice question too. What the fuck? Wait, rice? I uh, thought rice. What was your rice question, Annie? <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, rice. Yeah, yeah Annie, was what was just, your rice question? I was, question? Just, okay, I was right. just thinking about one. Is it I just one I question? I never come to it. But <laughs> I'll make a rice question right now. Would you rather Ronald McDonald make you rice every morning and it tastes like McDonald's? Or Freddy Fazbear make you rice every morning and it tastes like pizza. Mm? <laughs> hard question, I know. Oh, hard. that's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with Ronald McDonald because uh, as a 90s kid, that propaganda hit me much earlier in my life when I was way more susceptible to it. So. Yeah, I'll do <laughs> Ronald McDonald. In, in <laughs> I'm dead. That's a great question. I uh, originally heard, do you wash your eyes? And I was like, oh, did she say uh, ass? Because I know right now <laughs> there's like, I, I didn't know this, but apparently a bunch of guys don't wash their ass ever. What the? F I, I didn't know that. <laughs> My wife was like, do you wash your ass? I'm like, well, we're done in the shower, right? Like, we're, what else do you fucking do? <laughs> so at first I was like, oh, is she referring to that? But then I'm like, oh no, she said, eyes. I don't wash my eyes. I do work in perfumery. So I have to wear um, protection glasses when I'm in the lab mixing stuff. And then do I wash my rice? Yes, I do. Yeah, I do wash my rice. <laughs> I love that. That was great. <laughs> yeah, even Annie like heard eyes before like uh, she understood rice. Yeah, yeah, I heard eyes as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that seems to be the interview. Um, if you want to, you can promote anything from your channel or content if you want to know. Yes, you can check me out on YouTube. Uh, at CZR dot. Um, you can check me out on Twitter at CZR underscore drums. And uh, I also have a Patreon channel where I post a lot of behind the scenes and a lot of like what I'm working on, what's next for drum percent. Uh, all records are posted on YouTube and the latest in drum percent is usually updated on Twitter. So if you follow me in those three places, you're pretty much covered. After interviewing CZR, I realized that he is mostly using speed drumming and streaming as a fun thing on the side while he works full time to support his family. Notably, he is not afraid to talk about the hard sides of life and the problems he faces with it. Well, thank you. That was a pleasure to do, Seamaster. Thank you for watching. This took way longer than I expected, being first recorded in March and only just now being finished in August due to the immense burnout I had for quite a while. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell to not miss any future videos. So I don't know, hopefully in the future, uh, content creators can actually be paid a dignified wage, right? And then I'm gonna see a bunch of content creators with uh, instruments and seeing them learn or game with it. That'd be cool. Including you, that'd be cool. Mm. Yeah, I really want to do this, but I just don't have the money right now, sadly. All right. <laughs>